In this lesson, we'll run our first SQL command. However, before we do that, what I want you guys to do is create a few more entries within your database. Uh, and so you could see that off camera, I added about you know six or seven more entries. And you wanna make sure that you provide enough um, varying data to your database. So make sure you know the price is all different. Make sure that the is sale Boolean is you know, a good mix of true or false. Make sure that the inventory numbers vary enough. And then try to create them at different times as well, if you can do that. Uh, that way, when we actually go to make queries, we can see a variety of different output. And that won't happen if you only have three to four entries. But once you do that, we should be ready to start our first query. And what we want to do is right click on your database. So my database is called Fast API, and then select Query Tool. So that's going to open up a brand new tab. And what we can do is we can run our query from here. So here we type out our query, and then we just hit the play button, and that's going to run our query. So how do we make a query within a SQL database? So first of all, let's start off with the most basic query. I'm going to type it out, and then after we type it out and run it, I'm going to explain to you exactly what each part of the command actually does. So here we'll do select star from products, colon. Then once we've typed this out, what we can do is just hit the play button and let's see what happens. So this is going to run the query. We got the same output here saying that it successfully ran and it says 13 rows affected. Uh, and so what we can see here is it just printed out every single entry within our uh, products table. Now we only have one table, so it's essentially just dumping out the entire database. But if we had more tables, uh, you would see that this would only print out whatever was in our products table. So this command right here does one simple thing, and that is it's going to give us every single row within the products database. So let's actually break this down. So first of all, we start this command with select. So we're basically saying, hey, I want to select these rows. Uh, ignore this for now. We're going to come back to this. And then what we do is we run from and then products. Uh, and so you say what table you ultimately want to run this command for. So you say from and then the table name, and then it's going to run that query against that table. If we had a table called users and we wanted to get every user, we could do select star from users. No different, right? So it's just a matter of providing your specific table name. So every query is going to be with regards to some table. And the thing about SQL is every single command is going to end with a semicolon. So if I don't put the semicolon, uh, it's not going to do anything. Well, in this case, it actually ended up working, but that's just because we're using PG admin. If you did this in the command line, it wouldn't have worked. So remember semicolon at the end of every command. Now let's talk about what this uh, star or asterisk actually does. And so you can see by default, we get every row and that's coming from this part of the command. Um, but what does this do? Well, uh, if you see here, we, we get every single column back from our table, right? And that's because we use the star here. However, uh, in an actual database, your tables could have 50 columns, maybe more. They could have a ton of columns. And if you're running a simple query to get you know, some specific information, you may not want to get all of that data back. You may not care about most of the columns. You may only want one or two columns. And so we can filter out what columns we want returned back for each row. So the star means I want every single column. So we got every single column that we defined for the table. But if I wanted to run a query against the products table, but I only wanted a list of the different names of each product, I can specify just name. And so what this is going to do is this is going to grab just the name column uh, from my products table. So if I run this again, you can see we got the same exact data. We got all 13 entries, but it only returned just the name column. And then we can add in as many columns as we want. So if I wanted uh, the ID column as well and the price, I can hit run. And so now we got the ID and the price. And what's really nice is it's going to line up with the order that I write them here. So if I want the ID first and then the name and then the price, I could change this to ID name, price. And so now it's going to order it in that, in that exact order. So we got ID, name, and price. But if you do a star, it's just going to return every single column. Now, before we dig any deeper into SQL and how to structure SQL uh, commands, I want to talk about capitalization. Uh, and so you'll notice that when I ran this command, uh, the word select and the word from is capitalized. Uh, and I want to make this very clear, capitalization doesn't matter. So if I make this lowercase, and I make this lowercase as well, and then hit run, you'll see that everything works just fine as it did when it was capitalized. So capitalization doesn't matter. However, with a, any SQL statement, we have uh, two types of words. 
We've got SQL specific keywords, which is part of the SQL syntax. And then we have our user provided information. Uh, and so let's quickly talk about what those two things are. So the user provided information is keywords that I'm inputting in. So I'm asking SQL uh, or my Postgres database, I want the information from my products table. So I'm passing in this data. And so that one, you just, you have to make sure you just match this up with whatever it's called within our table. But all of the SQL specific uh, words that I don't create that don't match up with anything in our database, right? Those can be either capitalized or lowercase. It doesn't matter. It's not going to impact your SQL statement, but you will see that best practice is to capitalize it. So we'll do capital select and then capital from. And the reason we do that is that we can much easier tell which parts of our SQL statement is user provided information and what parts of our SQL statement is just basic SQL keywords. So this just makes it a little bit easier to read. You may not notice the benefit of it now, but you'll see that these SQL commands can get really long. They can span multiple lines. And so having those keywords capitalized, it makes it a little bit easier to understand. But keep in mind, it doesn't actually impact how the command, how the SQL statement actually runs. So it doesn't matter. But if you want to follow along with what I do, I like to capitalize them. Now with SQL, uh, what we can do is when we perform a query, we can rename any of these columns. So if we find that this name is a little inconvenient and maybe uh, you know renaming it makes it a little bit easy on our backend code to better interpret the data, we can pick any column we want and rename it. So let's say we're trying to fetch the ID column. I'm just gonna run this. We can see we grab the ID column and it's named ID. But let's say uh, this confuses our backend because we're retrieving uh, maybe data from another database that also, uh, you know, for users or something. And then we also have an ID field and we don't want them to get mixed up. I can rename this column and we can rename it by using the as keyword. So I say ID as, and then specify the new name. So I can name this uh, products underscore ID. So now if I run this, we can see that the column is now products underscore ID instead of just ID. And I can do this for any and as many columns as I want. So if I wanted to rename the is sale, uh, column, I can save it as on sale. And so there you go, guys. It's really as simple as that. Um, keep in mind, I kind of continued with my normal SQL uh, format uh, of capitalizing the SQL specific keywords just because it makes it a little bit easier to read.